the new Google News app for both Android and iOS today on Dottotech. Steve Dotto here, how the heck you doing this fine day? At Dottotech, we make technology easy so you can do more. More what? Well, you could spend a little more time assembling some of that IKEA furniture. <laughs> we'll wait for it. This one's the best. Oh my goodness. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about the Google News app. In May, Google released a new version of their app, of their iOS and Android app for Google News. And one of the main features of this new version is it's got artificial intelligence that curates the news more effectively for a more personalized news experience. Now, no people, no individuals are curating the news. Google is relying on its algorithm and artificial intelligence to do it. So let's take a look at what they've done. Uh, now, if you take a look at the old version of Google News, I'm just gonna bring up the old one. Now you can tell you've got the new one because it's the one with the nice fancy kind of folder-like graphic. The old version is the old newspaper type graphic and the old version was pretty pedestrian and boring. It like gave you the same news everybody else gives you. It just scraped the top headlines from around the world, it seemed, and delivered them to you. It was pretty boring. I never, it, it, it opened the door for Facebook, which had kind of more contextual news, even though it was probably far less accurate as far as, you know, as far as not being fake news, uh, because it just came from everywhere. Uh, but it opened the door for, I think, people to get their news a lot more from Facebook. And I think Google's pushing back now with this new app. So let's take a look at what the new app looks like and what it brings to the table. Now, when you first open the app, and it's the same in both Android and iOS, I'm running it on my iPhone 8 right now. When you first open the, it up, it brings you into the For You section, which we see right here. And it's got something called your briefing. Now, your briefing is the top five stories that Google's determined you may be most interested in. And they tell you right there at the top, the top five stories right now. So these are the ones that Google thinks that I might be most interested in. I guess it's a combination of my own personal preferences that it's experienced over time, the stories that I've read, plus the trending topics. So we see there and they've ranked them, one, two, three, four, five. And then beneath that, it's got a whole series of other stories that I might be interested in. So if you're just interested in kind of uh, getting yourself up on what's happening in the world from, a con from the context of your personal interests, this is a good place to start. It, this is kind of what Google's hoping that you'll start. Now there's a whole bunch of additional features that are built in here. Now we have to pay attention to the little icons because the little icons tell, it's where Google's done all the work in putting this together, a lot of the work, so we should pay attention. The first is the little three dot icon. Always, always press on the three dots anytime you're in any Google thing. So the three dots brings up all of the context sensitive information that we can do. So when we bring that up, we can save this article to read later if you decide that you want to save it. Because what will happen is, of course, over time, uh, you'll see news stories disappear from your feed. And if you want to find them again later, uh, you got to scroll back and you might not be able to find them. You might have to do a search. This way here, you can save it for reading later. That's a good feature. Uh, you can share it to your social platforms. That's always uh, good. But the keys here, I think, for most of us are more stories like this or fewer stories like this or hide stories from this publisher. So this is where you start putting your own personal preferences on and telling Google what stories you want to see more of and what you want to see less of so that they can deliver more of those sorts of stories. Now, here's my concern with this. Although I, I can see the point and I certainly support the idea um, and I understand why Google is doing it. But when we now start to tell Google what we want to see more of and what we want to see less of, although it's a better experience for us, it is a less equitable experience as far as really being informed with what's going on in the world because more and more the news is going to be tailored to our own personal preferences. Now, while we can turn off sources that we don't trust, et cetera, which is a benefit here, it's a two-edged sword because the other edge of that sword is if you turn off things that you disagree with, you're only going to be getting more news that is appealing to your palate, as it were. So, eh, you know, there, there is a, I, I have concerns about where this is landing, but, but we're going to have to deal with this because this is, this is how it's all going to work now. The next one that you want to take a look at, and I like this one a lot. This one here is the, uh, is the uh, kind of little multicolored piece, which gives you full coverage, access to full coverage. What the full coverage gives you is it gives you all of the different related stories around whatever one you tap on, including any other publishers that have published uh, similar stories, uh, but not just other publishers, other, other say blogs or other magazines, but you're also getting the Twitter feed, you're getting the opinion feeds. If we go down to the bottom, you see all of the Twitter feed as well. All of the coverage 
relating to that story. So this kind of sits on the other side of the fence of what I was just talking about, be, about being concerned, that we're only getting news that we're concerned about and interested in. Here, hopefully, you'll get some a little more balanced coverage and a little more context on any story that you happen to be looking at. At least that's my profound hope. Uh, we will see. I mean, as we say, it's not, or as I say, it's not a individual. It's not a curator, an individual person who's curating the content, but Google's artificial intelligence. It's an algorithm that's curating it. Uh, so we'll see over time just how balanced the delivery of news is. So that's the for you section, which is very personalized for you. If you go into the headlines, the headlines are really close to pretty much the old uh, the old Google News. It's basically just scraping the top headlines uh, that you're finding out there, that, that it's finding out there and delivering those two units, of course, categorized into the different main tech, main areas. You know, you're going to technology and there it is. Now, one nice thing that they've done interface-wise, I'm pretty impressed with this, is if we swipe to the right on any of these, I'm just swiping to the right, and it's bringing up other stories. So it's similar to the, to the, uh, to the full coverage that we saw in the, in the For You section, in, in that section, but now it's just giving us other published stories about the same topic. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper, if you want to read somebody else's coverage, I like that. I think that's pretty cool. So that's the headlines area. The favorites area is very customizable. In the favorites area, you can add your favorite topics that you're following and trending topics, and you can also turn on and off sources that you've determined are, are ones that you want to see more or less of. As well, you can uh, get stories based on your physical location, or uh, save searches and saved stories are here. So let me show you the, uh, a little bit of the integration though that happens between the desktop version and the mobile version. I'm just gonna go into Google News here on my desktop. We see the same basic areas, uh, but it's not as defined as we find it in the mobile. But here's the key, is you find a story that you're interested in, and I'll just pick. So let me see if I can find a story that's, uh, that's not political. Okay, everything you wanna know about cannabis legislation <laughs> sounds good to me. Now, when you find a story in the browser that you're interested in, you can move your cursor over top of these little grayed icons and they bring you into the ability to see, see, see the full coverage like we saw previously, going to your share menu to allow you to share it to your different platforms. This is the key one though, save it for later. So if, if you're reading through on the desktop, you say, I wanna save that for later. Now that article should be saved and let's go back into my smartphone and I'll just refresh this instance Let's scroll back down, and yeah, there it is. It's now saved. There's the Guardians, everything you want to know about cannabis legislation, but forgot to ask. So you've got some nice integration uh, between your browser-based version and the app itself. So I quite like that feature built in here. Uh, you can also create searches on favorite topics that you're interested in. So all you do here is, this is kind of nice, you go plus, and let's say that I want to have see, uh, topics on baby boomers. So because I'm always interested in baby boomers, so I'm just typing in baby boomer. I search for that and it comes up with all, it comes up with this search term, baby boomers. If I star the search term, it then is a topic that I can follow. So if I want to go in and see all the stories on it, I tap on it there and all of the stories uh, are, that are recently in the news about baby boomers are brought forward. I like that. So you can customize this version. I think this is an area that a lot of people probably aren't gonna spend a lot of time in, but it's worth spending time in the favorite section, going into topics and setting your favorite search terms for the topics that you want to be kept informed of at all times. That's a good one. And of course they've got presets, like I added my hockey team and you can add sports teams, et cetera, to that. Uh, but that's a nice feature. So overall, uh, the final thing I've done on the headlines, I've done, the, oh, the newsstand. Got to show you the newsstand. The newsstand um, is the ability for you to be able to manage your subscriptions to mainstream media. So you see there, we've got all of the mainstream publications. And if you choose to follow any of your publications here, if it's one that has a, a paywall, uh, you can pay for that all through your Google Pay plan. So you can pay for all of your subscriptions. If you want the New York Times or if you want something that, that, that does have a paywall and you want access to that content, you can manage it all here and not have to use their app. You can have it all consolidated right within the Google News app. And that, I think that's a big part of the future is how they manage the sub subscriptions because it's always going to be about money ultimately, isn't it? Uh, so that's a way that that's the revenue kind of model that's attached to the new Google News. Um, I'm hoping that the new Google News is going to do a better job of helping us keep informed on an equitable basis, uh, but that might be faint hope. 
but I'm going to cling to it. I'm going to cling to it with both hands. I hope you found our video today to be useful. If you have, please give us a like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell when you subscribe so that you're informed when we upload any new videos. I look forward to your comments. Are you using Google News? Is this, is this a tool that's working for you? If not, where do you turn to for your sources, for your news, and how do you uh, measure whether or not news is accurate or not in your own life. I would love to hear your comments on that in the comments here on YouTube. While I read every single comment, I don't always have time to reply, but I guarantee you I read each and every one. Until next time, I am Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.